Aloha from the beaches of Hawaii, here live with the Young Marine News Network. And I'm here with Young Marine Star Major Orozco for another great episode. How good is it to be here again this year with such beautiful weather this week? You know, it's, it's really amazing, sir. Just this opportunity to meet with young Marines and appreciate our veterans and commemorate history for such an event that changed the course of this world. You know, the attack on Pearl Harbor is what set the stage for World War II and then the what we have today. That's right, and it's been a really exciting week. We've still got a couple of events left here this week, but it's been pretty busy already. But we'll get into that later because we need to recap what we've been doing since the last episode of Young Marine News Network. But it really started off with Navajo Code Talker Day. Navajo Code Talker Day is an opportunity for young Marines to meet veterans that served their nation during World War II. The Code Talkers were a group of Navajo Native Americans that used the Navajo language to create a code for the American forces, specifically the Marine Corps during World War II. The Navajo Code Talkers are widely attributed for success in the Pacific, and if it wasn't for them, we might not be here today. And so these young Marines take the opportunity to honor these veterans for the work that they did, especially after they weren't recognized for several decades following the war. And we do our part to make sure we recognize them. And it's amazing how that all ties in together because the Code Talkers during World War II performed all those activities that all started, as you so well said, right here. We literally left straight from Code Talker Day, got on a plane, and we headed to Kansas City for the Marine Corps League Annual Convention, where it was the first opportunity for our Marine Corps League sponsors and friends from across the country to meet the National Young Marine of the Year and appropriately honored you in the ceremonies there. I think that was very well done. Phenomenal work and thank good you, on you. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Hoorah. So as the summer came to the close and everyone got back to school, we then moved into the Young Marine birthday. It's an opportunity for us Young Marines to look at the past and where we came from and our heritage from the Marine Corps and the Marine Corps League and look to the future as the future of this nation and our development as individuals and citizens. And really, that's, it's just a moment. It's a pause to recognize that. And this year, I went to Ohio to visit the Greater Cleveland Young Marines for their Young Marine Ball, and I went to the Buckley Field Young Marine Ball. And I had an amazing time to see that our organization is providing the kind of youth that are going to be successful tomorrow and lead this nation as we move forward into the future. You know, in October is such a busy month. At the same time that we're doing Young Marine birthday celebrations all around the country, we also had the Young Marine Symposium that was combined with the Division Commanders Conference this year. Symposium was very motivating and we got to use our new national headquarters to its full capacity with Division Commanders in one area, Young Marines in the other. The Symposium is, is really important for this organization. It's where Young Marines give the organization ideas. It's youth leading youth and, and providing that information for our Young Marines to be better because it's you guys who are in the field or in your divisions, who are at your units, you're the ones who know what's really happening out there. And it's the young Marines that come from those areas and we get to brainstorm and bring great ideas in order to better this organization. It's for youth by youth. And that's, that's really what we live up to in the young Marines is trying to make sure that our youth are leading other youth and in investing in one another as youth. You know, and that's what I mean. A lot of those ideas that come from the symposium are actionable for the program. And so as we begin to look through in more detail some of the ideas that were presented, and the interesting thing is many of the ideas that they came up with, we were thinking the same thing. So you're gonna see a lot more of that in the coming months as we put this into action. As we all know, drug demand reduction is a vital pillar of our program, even more now than ever. But I have to say this year, young Marines across the country really outperformed from years past in terms of various elements of that DDR mission. Joe, I gotta tell you, from Fulcrum Shield to Red Ribbon Week to even that special run, it was really phenomenal. How about hitting us on some of the highlights? Well, we had a great contributions from the, the nationwide from our drug demand reduction efforts in the Young Marine program. We had the by far the most submissions for the Fulcrum Shield Award. As you know, that's from the Department of Defense. Okay. Um, so at the most, we have eight submissions, and the most we've ever had in the past of that is just two. So we had eight from there. We had more units sign up for the Red Ribbon Week boxes than ever before. And, the, and now the uh, after action reports are flooding in and we've reached more people in our nation, not only from the adults and from the young Marines, but especially the youth in the community than we've ever hit before. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to ask the United States House of Representatives to join me in recognizing Atlantic Coast young Marines and their hard work 
during Red Ribbon Week. The Florida Regiment of Young Marines has performed more than 50,000 service hours since last October, with more than 35,000 hours of community service dedicated to our veterans. As you can see, the Atlantic Coast Young Marines and their fellow Young Marines throughout Florida are very active in their local communities. You know, and the capstone event this year was, was putting together that DDR 5K, you know, running drugs out of town. How phenomenal is that? You know, something we announced just in May, and a few short months later, how many thousands of people participated? We started with a small concept. We wanted to tie our healthy, drug-free lifestyle. We wanted to include the healthy part of it. We wanted to include the physical fitness part of it. We wanted to, to orchestrate units in their own little communities to gather people in their community to join us in a declaration of how important it is not only to be drug free, but to be healthy as well. So it started as a small effort. Um, we probably gathered in, that, in reference to four to 5,000 people across the country joining in on that same day across the country. We started at eight o'clock on the East Coast. When the clock struck eight o'clock as it moved from each time zone, we had more Young Marine units joining the effort. You know, and it wrapped up right here in Hawaii with Pyramid Rock Young Marines. But there's one race left to run, and this weekend, our friends out in Okinawa are gonna complete the race that they had delayed by the typhoon that impacted them that same weekend. But I gotta tell you, what a great year for drug demand reduction this year. And I know you're already planning with our team with XMM how we can improve it, make it better and more impactful next year to reach even more. And I know the 5K is gonna be even better. So as we move into November, we come into Veterans Day and the Marine Corps birthday. Tied together every year on the 10th and the 11th, the activities across the country are amazing, not just in scope, but in depth. Every day I get a report called Meltwater that recaps all the stories across the country. And I'm so impressed and amazed with the events that you young Marines are doing in support of our veterans, not just the Marine Corps and the Marine Corps birthday, but all of our nation's veterans. Thank you for all you do. I know they appreciate it and we really appreciate it as well. And I had the special opportunity to be a guest speaker at the Richmond, Indiana Marine Corps League Ball. What a wonderful group of people. And I get the feeling there's gonna be a young Marine unit there here pretty soon. And all that brings us here to the lovely shores of Oahu, where once again, the young Marines come to commemorate the events of Pearl Harbor, celebrate our veterans, and to do a little bit of community service. As the units all landed on island on Saturday and into Sunday, we once again went to the beaches of Marine Corps Base Hawaii, Kaneohe, to clean up the beaches. And we expanded that effort this year based on feedback last year. And we cleaned all the beaches around the island. So it was a great job by all the young Marines and adult volunteers that were out on the beaches this year. And the fun didn't stop there because after the beach cleanup was over, we broke into two groups and climbed the crater at Marine Corps Base Hawaii. There was a hard route and then there was the harder route. But we all got to the top and celebrated the wonderful views and the camaraderie of accomplishing something that a lot of the younger Marines weren't sure they would make. So after a great day at Marine Corps Base Hawaii, all the units had opportunities to partake of activities all across the island. And your National Young Marine of the Year was out there motivating, inspiring at a multitude of events. Uh, young Marines all across the island travel with their units to really enjoy themselves, but beyond that, to appreciate our veterans and the history that happened on this island. Myself personally, I've attended the memorial at the USS Arizona. I went snorkeling at Hanama Bay and a, a multitude of other events where I really got to take time to appreciate what happened on this island and young Marines here and the community, the people and the culture that exists on this great island. So not only were young Marines exploring the Arizona Memorial and learning its history and going out and exploring the beaches and snorkeling in the water, but they've also been to the Dole Plantation where pineapples come from, Makapuu Point Historic Lighthouse, and even an opportunity to go aboard the historic battleship Missouri that stands right next to Arizona as an end cap to World War II. Okay. And this morning we honored our veterans by laying a memorial wreath at the National Cemetery of the Pacific. And we were honored at the ceremony to be joined by a special guest speaker, Sergeant Major Paul McKenna, Marine Forces Pacific Sergeant Major. This week is pretty special, not only for Marines, but all service members here stationed in Hawaii. And to have the opportunity to have so many young Marines come you know, all the way out here to Hawaii to, to learn and be educated on our history. But I will tell you this, I mean, uh, 7 December 1941, 
was very significant. It's, it's significant in that the label, the greatest generation, uh, means something to so many people. The opportunities that you know, my, my family has been given is because of those men and women that sacrificed so much uh, back in World War II. So uh, this week and all the events leading up to 7 December uh, is a moment for us all to just reflect and, and cherish the great opportunities we have as Americans. What a memorable event that I know young Marines will carry with them for the rest of their lives. And we're just honored to have the opportunity to do this annual memorial service there at the Punch Bowl. And on the morning of December 7th, we'll start our day at Marine Corps Base Hawaii, Kaneohe Bay, which was the first of the DOD elements to be attacked on the island on that fateful day. And the culminating event of this week's activities will be the annual Pearl Harbor Memorial Parade, where our young Marines and adult volunteers will be out there helping and supporting in the parade ceremonies. After all the ceremonies and parades, our young Marines are here today just having a good time. They've done the hard work, but now let's have a little bit of fun. So they're out here on the luau today. We're gonna enjoy the food and the beach and just take in the natural beauty of the islands of Hawaii. And I have to say this year, we've had wonderful weather. Every day has been blue skies, light breezes, and a great time. And we are seriously enjoying every day and I know the young Marines are too. Young Marines, as we move forward, there's new videos that'll be coming out, involve training and education, and I encourage you to go check it out. Our very own Mr. Hendricks, the training manager for National Headquarters, created a new sleeve rolling video where you can learn to have the best sleeves out there. So I encourage you to further your own development, know yourself and seek self-improvement, and make sure you go check out those videos. And as we leave the shores of Hawaii, we still have a couple of fast-paced weeks left in the month of December. But one of the biggest events that happens this month is the announcement of the new Division Young Marines of the Year. But that also means that we'll be saying goodbye to this year's Division Young Marines of the Year. I want to give a farewell to the Division Young Marines of the Year that are finishing up their 2017 tour for their one year term that they serve. Uh, First Division, Young Marine Sergeant Major Jordan James. Division Two, Young Marine Sergeant Major Caleb Maurer. Division Three, Young Marine Sergeant Major Carson George. Division Four is myself. Division Five is Young Marine Sergeant Major Michael Dolan and Division 6 is Yemory Sergeant Major Anna Saucedo. Farewell to you and good work and good luck in all the things that you've done. And young Marines, right after Christmas and the new year, it's time to sign up for spaces. We've got a lot of great events coming to you next summer and also a special announcement about the World War I, World War II adventure this summer, which is gonna be a competition for our older young Marines. And in the new year, we're gonna introduce our second public affairs course and I have to tell you the public affairs course is one of those things that has paid off time and time again as our hard charging young marine public affairs correspondents have produced volumes of video picture and audio this year and are continuing to do so right behind the cameras as I'm speaking to you now and there's footage that they've produced on island that you'll see in this episode a lot of it with young marine sergeant major Roscoe That'll wrap it up for this episode of the Young Marine News Network. In February, we're gonna film at the National Museum of the Marine Corps during the Public Affairs Correspondence course. Until then, stay motivated, stay engaged, and keep living that healthy, drug-free lifestyle. Aloha! And mahalo.